Shalom to the elect, giving all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, Bishmir Kokadash, and giving double honors to the elder apostles, elder bishops, the great millstone who well. Peace and salutation to the elect. Shemuel, my friend, is my foot from the great millstone, playing tables camp located here in the city of Philadelphia. I bow my angel, mighty might. Come on, lesson, love, our lesson. Yahweh is the true, almighty, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, or any cause of God, Jehovah, Yahweh. True name is Yahweh, which means he is or he exists. Hashem is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father, his only begotten son, his name in the Hebrew, which is Yahweh Shai, not Yeshua, not um, uh, Jesus Christ, true name is Yahweh Shai, which is he the deliverer, by Shemra Kodesh, name of Spirit Holy. And Yahweh Shai is the deliverer for the nation of Israel. Nation of Israel consists of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners like to a speckled bird that been scattered across the four winds, but lineage go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by their fathers. So I did a lesson about the U.S. Marshals uh, catching like these Jake that, um, you know, they did a, a shooting at a bus stop in Philadelphia on a rainy day. And they uh, got each and every one of them, you know, they, they tracked down the, the stolen car. And, um, yeah, despite the fact one Jake went to another state, they got him. So I was going to go into just a brief uh, slave history, slavery history. And you, as you can see in this image, this is off of black then, which are not black, we're dark-skinned people all right the Israelites primarily were dark-skinned people back in the ancient times but you know due to, to our <clears throat> um, being amongst the nation you know some Israelites may look like other nations uh, black is a uh, negative uh, social false and construct uh, given to us all right so as African all right, American, um, Negro, uh, we are the Israelites, okay? Those are bywords. So, we have it here, blood hens, the bloodiest threat to some runaway slaves. Slaves who run away from the plantation, or the Shaddai, you know, back in slave history, used to work on a plantation. You, know, you would uh, gather certain crops and do work for your master, right? To be profitable and if you didn't meet your quota there's punishments for that it says life uh slaves who ran away from plantation life feared that they would hear the sound of hounds hound dogs catching up to them interviews with former slaves have reiterated the fact that despite the threat of other wild animals while being on the run it was the use of trained dogs that worried them most. Bloodhounds were first imported not just for their tracking skills, but their strength in apprehending the slaves. Former slaves claim masters, patrollers, and hired slave catchers would use savage dogs trained to hunt and follow the scent of a fugitive slave. There was also slave holders who confirmed the stories of former slaves, Bennett H. Barrow, a slaveholder from Louisiana, kept a detailed diary of the frequent mentioned importance of dogs in capturing runaways as the terrible violence they could inflict. Get a scripture. This is, uh, this is uh, Psalm chapter 55 and 9. It says, Destroy, O Yahweh, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Okay, and you can apply us being uh, the city, being Jerusalem. Okay, Zion. Okay, us being a people before the face. Also, 
This is the book of Habakkuk. Chapter 2 and 8, it says, Because thou hast spoiled many nations, Esau, Edom, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, payback, because of men's blood, all right, violence, and for the violence of the land and of the city, so like of the city and of all that dwell therein. All right. This is also Habakkuk chapter 2 and 12. I mean, you can keep reading. It's a lot. Habakkuk 2 and 9. Woe to him that coveted an evil covetous to his house, Esau, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people. And has sinned against thy soul. Okay, so they got shame on them for obviously the crimes of slavery. Okay. For the stone shall cry out the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establish a city by iniquity. And America was as, uh, set up by slavery. Okay. For behold, is it not a hollow of hosts that the people shall labor in the fiery fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity? Yep. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I got one other precept. Ezekiel chapter 35. And it says here, Ezekiel chapter 35 and 5. This goes against Esau, Edom, Mount Seir. And it says, Ezekiel 35 and 5, it says, Because thou hast a, had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Okay, any further, the, the, the affliction. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord Yahweh, Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, saith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Okay. Slaveholders trusted using dogs as many of them were afraid to hunt slaves without them. The Maroons, which that's, uh, I believe we go back to over there to, uh, uh, men, land, what, like Benjamin, um, some of, uh, in the West Indies, uh, particularly in Jamaica, the Maroons were considered the most dangerous group and most feared. Although dogs played a significant role in the recapture of slaves, the slaves planned their escape with, uh, with them in mind. <laughs> you know, so they would think about it. The slaves used many methods to throw off the scents off from hands. Some used rabbit grease on their feet, and others would travel through muddy water. Then there were slaves that met the dogs head on with knives and whatsoever else they could carry along to fight back. However, those who carried nothing to fight bloodhounds often endured the bloodiest fight of their lives. Often. It says bloodhounds were trained to tear into slaves and in some cases fight them unto death. So, you know, that's it. You got some more information in the comments. The English bloodhound, while known for scent tracking, could not induce to attack, be induced to attack. They were found licking slaves. <laughs> this guy. So the cap captors brought in a vicious need called the the Cuban bloodhound, or doggo cubano, which is actually a bloodhound. The term bloodhound was still used, or used to instill fear in slaves. And the American pit bull terrier gets its lineage. Vicious 
selflessness towards animals and people from the doggo cubano okay so uh, this uh <coughs> here you know esau being a cunning hunter so you know you see look at this uh jake right here fighting off uh basically various dogs right here you know, i got his fists up you know but you know you got dogs i'm trying to bite on him you know this is because our uh iniquity you're being punished so that's just another little lesson so Esau being a cunning hunter and uh, things he would use to get Jake so the bloodiest threat to run away slaves blood hands Shalom to the elect all praises on the glory to Yahweh Shabbat Shalom